What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. This story's called, Entitled Mother and Entitled Dad Expect Me to Pull a Debit Card from My Ass and Slam Me in a Survey. A few years ago, I worked as a branch manager at a mid-sized regional retail bank. It was a small branch, so it was just me, a personal banker and assistant manager, and a two to four tellers. We had a college pretty close. It wasn't a Division I school or anything, but they had a football team, a Division III, which was popular locally and competitive in their division. It was big enough, every year we opened some new accounts for incoming students. One day, Entitled Mom, Proud Entitled Dad, and their new arrival freshman son, doesn't really speak, walk into the branch and directly into my office. My branch probably looked like the headquarters of the bank, but it was just a regular bank in a big old school bank building that was rented. I stood up and greeted them. When I did, I looked into the lobby to see if it was suddenly super busy and I didn't notice. The lobby was empty. They blew straight past the tellers and banker whose office is customer facing and inviting straight to mine. I met eyes with the head teller and she just shrugged. She later told me that everyone tried to greet them, but they weren't having it. We need to open a new account for our son. Great, our personal banker opens all our new accounts and will help you set up everything you need while freshman son is here, three hours from them at school. Let me introduce you. I always let her open new accounts so she can make her bonus. They ignore me and take a seat. Freshman son is here to play football. Insert 10 minutes of talk about football and his role as the new freshman kicker at Division III University. I politely engaged in the conversation. You're the branch manager. We'd prefer that you open the accounts. Sure, no problem. They seem to be a nice family, but definitely helicopter parents and a little entitled, but not story worthy. We talked a little football, good places to eat, and some general info about the area. I go over a checking account with the kid and there isn't much to do. A simple student checking account with a debit card and online banking access. Things turn. He will need a debit card right away. He has $700 cash to start the account. We don't want him walking around with that money. Can we get one today? I'm sorry, but we don't print new cards at the branch, but we do have a few expedited delivery options that can help. But he needs a card now. We are also in a hurry. There are a lot of new student things we need to attend today. Maybe proud entitled dad should stop talking about football if you have somewhere to be. The fastest way I can get a card here is to have it expedited to the branch in two days. There is a fee of $25, but I'll waive it. I can also have the card delivered to our branch closest to the campus so freshman student can walk over and grab it. Five minute walk. We can deposit most of his money into his account now and he can keep some cash on him for incidental expenses until the card arrives. He can activate the card at the branch ATM. It's super easy. I felt like this was pretty above and beyond the call of duty to offer a good solution. He's here to play football. He can't be worrying about this. The entire time, I'm of course wondering why they didn't set the account up at their home branch so he could have his debit card when he arrived. However, even with their massive failure in planning, I feel like I deliver the best possible customer service. They get visibly upset. The dad starts to get heated mumbling under his breath that my bank sucks. I need a card here first thing tomorrow. I keep my composure. I reiterate as nicely as I can that it isn't possible. There has to be a way. I had a bank do it before. He practically has a vein popping on his forehead. I wanted to say, dude, I don't know where the truck the bank even makes this crap. I can't drive to the debit card plant and pick one up and I'm not a genie. It's going to be two days. But I gave the standard canned response when someone is asking for the impossible. I wanted them the frick out of my branch at this point. I offered to go meet their freaking kid at a time of their choosing with his debit card. I actually meet him with the card at an ATM by his dorm where I can show him how to activate it and use it. Nice kid. I hear from his mom at least three more times asking questions about the accounts and because she messed up the simple task of setting up online banking. She emails me about it several times as well. I had more contact helping her with this account 
than any other student account in history. She gets an online survey at random. Surveys were important to me. Anything less than a 5 out of 5 might as well be a zero in the eyes of many at the bank whose only job was looking at surveys. Part of my bonus was tied to the score, and at a perfect 5.0, I led the region. 1 out of 5. A freaking 1! And a lengthy complaint about debit cards, online banking, and the branch manager's unwillingness to help. It killed my perfect average with surveys which no one else had out of the 15 branches for the quarter. And I had to write a freaking action plan about it because if you got a 1, it was discussed with some lame coach type person. I know there wasn't much payoff to this story, but that 1 still bothers me. She just had to deal with the manager. Yeah, that sounds incredibly frustrating. That is one of the bad things of a manager job is the customer service aspect because you're <laughs> you have to take care of so much crap oh my gosh customers they're stupid <laughs> not not all customers obviously what i'm saying is the ceiling for stupidity in customers is really high and really high and not everyone gets up there um, but you you know from all these stories a lot of them do this story is called how to ruin a wedding for everyone. I just got home from the wedding of a really good friend of mine, and I'm fuming. It's a long story, so bear with me. My friend planned her wedding for a long time, and everything was just right. She always wanted a winter wedding, and she had luck it even snowed a bit today, so she was super happy until the aunt-in-law showed up with her daughter. The daughter was wearing a long, silvery white gown. It was a skin-tight, strapless mermaid dress. No jacket or anything, while it was negative one degrees. Ugh. The ceremony. Aunt-in-law, who I'll call Ale, because that's a really good name. Ale and her daughter, entitled daughter, arguing with the church officiant who told entitled daughter to wear a kind of scarf to cover her shoulders. They yelled at him that it's a ridiculous and outdated rule. The groom told them to go with it and stop making a scene. Entitled daughter kept complaining that it's too cold in the church until the person next to her told her to suck it up a few times. Ale cried the whole time. So loud, people started telling her to keep quiet or go out. The shooting. Oh. Ale tried to place Entitled daughter as far in the centers of the photos as she could and asked the photographer constantly to take photos of just her daughter. He said no, and Ale got sniffy, complaining about how unprofessional he was. The dinner, maid of honor and best man gave both short but sweet speeches. Ale reached for the mic. By the looks of my friend and her husband, this was not planned. She told a story about how her daughter and the groom were childhood best friends and how sad her daughter got when they had to move because she, Ale, started her own business in town 20 kilometers away. Ale said she was hoping her daughter and my friend can get best friends because she can learn a lot from her daughter. Ale handed the mic to her daughter. She said she was so happy to have made it. She wants to become a vet and as everyone knows, this is a lot of hard work, but she would never miss the wedding and made jokes about how she's now behind with her studies. It looked like she wanted to say more, but the best man grabbed the mic, thanked both for their speeches, and told us to enjoy the dinner. Ale and Entitled Daughter talked so loudly every table could hear their conversations. They wouldn't stop talking no matter if they wanted to listen or not. Ale was praising her daughter the whole time and talking about her business trying to get sales. She owns some kind of decor shop and told me she provided the wedding with the decor. Later, my friend told me this was bazooka salad because the decor was from the maid of honor who bought it from Ikea for her. It was cringy. The second photo shoot. The snow had melted a bit and it was kind of muddy and that's when crap hit the fan. I wasn't there because it was way too cold for me so I missed the final act but a few guests told me what happened when they gossiped about it later. With that said, I don't know how much of the following part is true, so take it with a grain of salt. 
Apparently, one of the guests stepped on Entitled Daughter's dress and she was furious. She apparently yelled at him and called him a donkey. She just kept going even after he apologized to her. The groom finally had enough and told them to go home. This is when Ale told the groom he was a booty hole the whole day to them and she didn't deserve to be treated like that. She tried to shove him only to slip and according to the guests, she twisted or at least hurt her ankle in the process. Mother-in-law offered to drive them to the hospital but they refused. The aftermath. By the end of the day, the mood was down. Guests left early and my friend is mad. It was supposed to be their day, but Entitled Daughter and Ale tried to make it all about them, and she was way too shy to say anything against them. She feels like it's her fault. The groom and his family are pretty mad about Ale too. The mother-in-law told me her sister was always like this, and nobody on the groom's side wanted her to come because of this, while the maid of honor is angry because of the decoration lie. The family of the bride's side, who are really non-confrontational, tried to talk it down and tried to justify the actions by saying, maybe they had a lot going on, or maybe it was our fault because we should have cared more about their needs. Mm -hmm. Yo, yo, hold the phone. First off, that family, sick and nasty, all right? Not, I, okay, I say sick and nasty because as in, you know, sick, that's cool, nasty, you know. Anyways, um, I really love people like that that are always trying to love it out, you know, in, instead of, oh, I'm gonna make you eat my fist up your butt. Seconds, I really feel bad for the bride and the groom. Oh my god, weddings, expensive, stressful. And I know this speaking without any experience in weddings because it just comes across as very stressful and expensive. <laughs> it's to waste that with pettiness and stupidity. Oh, oh, oh. To the gallows with the man. Freaking Skyrim intro style, they're freaking entitled butts. This story's called, Your Grandmother Won't Help Me, So I'll Help Myself to Her Money. Little bit of background. My mother and grandmother inherited some shares in an old investment in the family. We call the investment the Ute, because it is a handful of Ute shares that my great-grandfather bought. The dividends come every other month, and considering that my grandmother is not a spring chicken, she relies on this income to supplement the household. I live with my grandmother and pay rent to help out, and my younger sister stays with us too. Lately, there have been a lot of issues with the investment. Usually, my parents and my grandmother would split the check evenly, but two months ago, she took the whole thing for herself. It has caused a host of problems financially since then. My mother's justification for taking the check was to get a loan for a new house, because no one would give them a loan with their credits. <laughs> My mother took nearly $2,000 from my grandmother in October, which she was not even remotely apologetic for. I had the pleasure of having this conversation with my mother last night. Here's the cast. Landlord is the current landlord for the property they own. Little brother, me. Entitled parents is my mother. Yes, landlord is just extremely intrusive lately and it's making us want to move for sure in February. Where do you plan on getting the resources to move by then? Yote. Remember, you only get half of the Ute. I will have your ass if you take my grandmother's share of it again. Respect your elders. Most places you can pay the security deposit in first month's rent separately when you move in. I promise to half of this coming one. This coming check? You mean indefinitely? You are not getting away with taking the Ute again. The SSI is going away from me in January, obviously, so I can't promise it indefinitely, but I'm hoping for the best. My sister is turning 18 in January. She hardly needed SSDI to begin with, but my mother still received benefits for her when she moved out to live with my grandmother and I. It takes a special level of moral bankruptcy to steal from an elderly woman. Your mother, no less, who did her best to raise and love you, please don't steal from her again. It's a struggle to deal with this BS. You aren't a child. You are not entitled to anything from her. You know damn well what my great-grandmother intended in her will. 
and it wasn't solely your money to take. First of all, her house is paid for and her car is paid for. Most mothers, when they see the child struggling, will offer to help. She's never helped me in life, even as a small child. Desp Despite any arguments we have, if you were in dire financial straits, I would do everything I could to financially help you. You didn't choose to be here, I chose for you to be here, and for that reason amongst others, I will always take a partial responsibility for you and your financial welfare. I don't care if you're 50. Grandma wouldn't help me if I was being kicked out of my home. Period. She doesn't care. She just doesn't. I'm not stealing from your grandmother. If I need more than you here, there, it's because overnight here my income will have gone down by $770 a month and I'm trying to avoid being homeless. It's not to squander away money. Even little sister said it's kind of messed up that grandma's taking half the check. If I could buy a house, even get a mortgage, that would cut the prices down by half that what I pay per month with rent. The rental market is the highest in the Midwest, so you have no right to really say anything. Pay your bills and pay your rent and then we will see how you feel. If she can't be compassionate enough to help me out when I'm about to lose my home, for instance, then I need to help myself because as a mother, my first priority is to make sure little brother has the things he needs. Hey, it's me again. I'm talking to you about your behavior, Mom. It's hurting people that love you. Please, if you have any sense left, stop stealing money from my grandmother. My behavior is appropriate for the given situations. All I did was say I couldn't promise. Now let things be. That money isn't yours to take. Uh, I'm done discussing money with you now. I've explained myself thoroughly. You and little sister have a good night. Give her my love. I blocked her after this. I'm at a complete loss of what to do. My grandmother has allowed a lot of the mistreatment to happen, especially with the theft. I feel stuck. I just wanted to get this out. First of all, buddy, holy cow, that was a lot of dialogue. I'm not complaining. That was that was fun. <laughs> that, I'd never used that voice for such a long time, <laughs> like consecutively. It was so strange. Um, again, I dig it though. Second, I am sympathetic to your situation. That sounds soups doops rough, man. This story's called Entitled Kid Thinks He's Entitled to My Sister. So I think you all know who the cast is, so let me get on with the story. I worked at a summer camp and my sister attended as a camper. Guess Entitled Kid's age. On the very first day of camp, Entitled Kid declared his love for my sister and he didn't even know her name. I'm pretty sure he had a bad home life and that's what caused his behavior. He always hated doing activities without her and he even tried to kiss her and succeeded. But then it got weird. He literally slapped my sister's butt and then he bit me and other counselors and he even cut me with bloody safety scissors. And his mom slash grandma didn't give two craps about what he did. He even jumped in the water at the pool and had to be saved by a freaking lifeguard. When he realized that my sister didn't like him, he pursued other girls as well. He was five! Later on, we were at a farmer's market and he was there in a freaking jumpy house and he tracked down my sister and sat on her lap and bit both of us. Well, psychologists of YouTube, what? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.